رب شرح لی صدری و یسر لی امری وحل العقدتم من لسانی یفقہ قولی پروردگار میرا سینہ کھول دے اور میرے کام کو میرے لیے آسان فرما دے اور میری زبان کی گرہ سلجھا دے تاکہ لوگ میری بات سمجھ سکیں بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم ڈیئر اسٹوڈینٹس آئی ہوپ یو آل آر ڈوئنگ ویری ویل ہائی ایم مس فوزیہ الطاف اینڈ ٹوڈے وی آر گوئنگ ٹو اسٹارٹ دا کنٹینیو دا لیکچر نمبر ٹو آف چیپٹر نمبر ون اینڈ دیٹ از سیل اسٹرکچر اینڈ فنکشنس بفور اسٹارٹنگ دا لیسن آئی ووڈ لائک ٹو شیئر اے کوٹیشن ود یو اینڈ اٹ اسٹیٹ سیٹ ایف یو آر ناٹ ولنگ ٹو لرن نو ون کین ہیلپ یو If you are determined to learn, then no one can stop you. So it's always your will to do anything in your life. So be ambitious. So today's topic of uh, discussions uh, under discussion will be chromatography. We will discuss about uh, some techniques like electrophoresis, spectrophotometry, microscopy and micrometry. So before starting the lesson, I would like to remind you about having a notebook and a pen in your hand to note down the important points of the lesson. So are you ready? Let's start. So starting from the technique uh, that is chromatography. Now, first of all, we will see what is chromatography and how this technique is implemented in biological sciences and uh, what, is the, what are the applications of uh, this technique. So uh, let's have a, a basic background uh, regarding chromatography. Chromatography is a word that means color writing. So the literal meaning of chromatography is color writing. Now, some materials appear homogeneous, but uh, they are actually a combination of uh, different substances. For example, there are different uh, solutions that uh, uh, physically they appear as a homogeneous mixture, but actually in that particular substance or a mixture, there are multiple uh, uh, substances that are mixed together to form a one substance or a mixture. So for example, green plants contain a mixture of different pigments and uh, like uh, different uh, pigments like chlorophyll and uh, many other multiple uh, chlorophylls that give colors to the petals of the flowers and different uh, leaves. And uh, in case of black ink pens uh, in the pen, it is also a mixture of different colored materials. So now what is a chromatography? Well, chromatography is defined as that it is a technique which is used to separate different chemical compounds from a particular mixture. Okay, it is a technique which is used to separate different chemical compounds from a mixture. It is a great physical method for observing mixtures and the uh, solvents, uh, different solvents and mixtures. And uh, uh, it is a physical method. And we can actually observe that a particular mixture is made up of how many different components or uh, what kind of different substances are used to form a particular mixture. Now, uh, this is a simple organization of a whole apparatus. Uh, basically, this uh, glass chamber is known as uh, chromatography uh, chamber and uh, this is a filter paper basically uh, that is used in case of paper chromatography uh, because uh, in paper chromatography, paper is used for the separation of a mixture. That is why this uh, is known as paper chromatography. Now, there are uh, many other ways of uh, chromatography also. So, and basically this is a simple organization and uh, in the coming uh, lesson we are going to study in detail how this whole apparatus is arranged and how uh, this uh, mixture is separated and everything regarding this is, uh, will be uh, discussed later on. Now, for example, uh, this is a uh, simple example of a mixture and uh, here you can see this is a black ink in a marker. The sample was placed on a filter paper and uh, it was allowed uh, to, uh, it was dipped in a solvent. 
uh, for some time and after some time the whole uh, ink was separated on the basis of different components now we can see that this particular ink contained different colors actually in it to make a perfect black color now uh, let's see what are the different applications of chromatography so basically uh, it is generally used for the separation of mixtures like proteins amino acids and photosynthetic pigments etc so uh, basically uh, in case of leaf chromatography we will see that for uh, a particular leaf contains how many different kinds of uh, photosynthetic pigments or different kind of pigments are present in a particular leaf practically we will be uh, performing this in our lab inshallah so uh, now let's see what are the different types of uh, chromatography so basically there are different types of chromatography and the different substances can be separated on the basis of a variety of methods and the presence of uh, the characteristics such as size and shape the total net charge on a substance uh, we can also separate the uh, substances present in a mixture on the basis of the charges of any compounds hydrophobic groups present on the surface can also be separated and the binding capacity with the stationary phase can also be uh, you, uh, this characteristic can also be used for the separation of a particular substances in a mixture now uh, here i'm going to discuss a uh, commonly employed chromatography techniques uh, that are generally applied in on a industrial scale also on the lab scale also so basically there are different types like column chromatography i'm here just going to uh, make you familiarize with these different techniques so uh, in higher studies uh, when you you will uh, you are going to uh, study about these techniques so at least you should know the name uh, that you have heard this before so column chromatography and there is an ion exchange chromatography method also present uh, gel uh, gel uh, uh, permeation that is molecular sieve chromatography is also can, it is a technique that can be employed affinity chromatography and the fifth one is a paper chromatography paper chromatography uh, is an experiment that we will be performing in our bio lab inshallah number 6 is thin layer chromatography and number 7 gas chromatography number 8 is dye ligand chromatography at number 9 is hydro uh, hydrophobic interaction chromatography and pseudo affinity chromatography and last but not the least is the high pressure liquid chromatography and it can be abbreviated as hplc so uh, now let's see uh, some details about the paper chromatography uh, now this is a glass chamber and uh, here uh, on the uh, it is filled with the solvent solvent is actually a mobile phase and the paper is always a stationary phase so uh, a mixture is applied on the one end of the paper and it is hanged in a chamber uh, it is closed with a lid so that uh, an environment a whole environment can be set and after some time like after 30 minutes we will observe that the because the solvent uh, was uh, moving on a paper along with that the mixture also uh, the substances present in a mixture also got separated uh, on the basis of their um, size and density so uh, basically this uh, was the origin where the sample was loaded and uh, after uh, the uh, uh, process of chromatography this uh, mixture was separated and the red pigment was found at the 2 cm from the origin purple pigment was found at 6 cm from the origin blue uh, pigment was uh, found at 8 cm from the origin so this is uh, this measurement can be calculated by using a simple uh, ruler and finally the solvent front solvent front is the point till where the solvent was reached on a paper so it was 10 cm from the point of origin so uh, now let's see what are the different phases of paper chromatography so basically uh, it contains two phases stationary phase and a mobile phase 
Now let's see what a uh, stationary phase. I have discussed that it is a phase uh, that contains a solvent and mobile phase. Uh, 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 sorry, stationary phase is actually a paper and mobile phase is actually the solvent that runs on a stationary phase. That is a filter paper, basically. So the mechanism involved in uh, paper chromatography is uh, the apparatus is known as a chromatography chamber. And it can be made up of glass uh, or it can be made up of transparent uh, plastic, but uh, highly recommended is a transparent glass chamber. Now, mobile phase consists of a solvent in which mixture sample is dissolved. Okay. And it is passed through a stationary phase that is a filter paper. Mobile phase travels and separates the particles at different places according to their individual affinity to the paper and according to the size and density of the components also. Now paper is known as chromatogram. It is then separated with liquid locating agent that is known as staining dye and it is used uh, in some cases but not in case of ink. Uh, but in other mixtures that are actually transparent, so a uh, spray uh, is used that is known as staining dye. Uh, it is used so that uh, it can attain some stain and we can uh, actually measure the distance traveled by the different components on the paper. Now, uh, this is a mobile phase that is a solvent and look how this uh, solvent phase is traveling on a stationary phase that is a filter paper and along with that uh, mixture is uh, the substances present in the mixture is uh, separating according to their affinity to the paper and the point till there uh, where the solvent travel is known as solvent front so the distance traveled between uh, by the red dot is six centimeter how we can calculate the rf values rf value is the uh, distance traveled by a particular die divided by a total uh, distance traveled by a solvent front. Now let's see what are the applications of paper chromatography. So basically paper chromatography is used to study the process of fermentation and ripening of different fruits and uh, different uh, materials and uh, to also to check the purity of the pharmaceuticals and to, uh, to inspect the, uh, some cosmetic, the quality of cosmetics and to detect the contaminants in drinks and foods and also to examine the reaction mixtures in the biochemical laboratories paper chromatography is widely used uh, technique in uh, bi biological and medical fields now here we have a video demonstration and you can perform this experiment at your home by using the uh, coffee filter paper and you can easily perform this experiment at your home and you can uh, actually uh, test that different inks, the mixture of different inks uh, contains different uh, components actually. So let's see the video first. So the things that are needed are uh, water and three cups. Uh, disposable cups can be used, uh, three different colored uh, markers and uh, some tape and the coffee filter paper, uh, some uh, uh, pencils for making the lines on a paper and a ruler. So basically uh, what you are going to do is First of all, uh, make a strips from a filter paper. Cut them. Now make some baseline. Load your sample. and hang in a glass that uh, contain water. Remember, your uh, sample should not be dipped in a water. After some time, you can see the dispersion of the ink. So 
So that was all. Try this at home. Now we are going to discuss the second technique and that is about electrophoresis. Now, as you can see in this diagram, this is a very amazing technique and this can be used uh, for uh, analyzing the DNA fragments. Now let's see what is this and how we can use this technique. So basically electrophoresis is a laboratory technique which is used to separate the DNA and RNA or protein molecules based on their size and their net electrical charge. As we all know, DNA and different proteins uh, actually contain uh, charges on them because of the ionic substances and uh, because of the uh, phosphate ions in case of DNA and proteins, uh, molecules also contain the side chains, amino acids. And uh, electric current is basically used to move uh, molecules, uh, to uh, molecules uh, so that they can be separated through a gel. Now pores in a gel, they work like a sieve, allowing the smaller molecules to move faster as compared to the larger molecules. Now the, uh, we will study about the gel electrophoresis and let's see what is the procedure. Basically, first of all, a gel is prepared and uh, first we will see how a gel is prepared and uh, how the sample is loaded and how this whole process is done. First of all, uh, we prepare a casting tray and then we prepare a agarose gel. Agarose gel is allowed to, uh, on these two sides we apply the masking tape and uh, agarose gel is then allowed to, to uh, have, a, to attain a shape we allowed it to solidify and uh, a comb is also inserted at one point so that uh, it can uh, develop a well in a gel. We need a well in a gel so that we can load our sample in those gels and when our uh, gel is ready we load the DNA samples in a well and uh, that uh, region is uh, the whole uh, tray, the electrophoresis tray is filled with a buffer solution so that it can allow the electric current to pass through. Now the one end of the gel uh, electrophoresis is uh, applied to the power supply, the cathode region of the uh, power supply and the other end is attached to the anode part. Now we all know that DNA is a negatively charged particle so it will move towards the positive side of a electric current. So the velocity of the uh, velocity of the different uh, particles uh, fragments of DNA will be inversely proportional to the size of the molecules. The size of the DNA fragment and uh, the larger molecules will stay at this region and the lighter molecules will move far away or it will move more uh, towards the positive side of the anode or a battery. Now this is the real image of gel electrophoresis that are used in the biological labs uh, and these techniques are basically used in higher educational institution because uh, these are used for the research purposes. So this is uh, where the uh, gel is uh, loaded uh, and uh, this chamber is closed so that the internal environment can be maintained and it is uh, the apparatus is connected to the uh, cathode and anode regions of the power supply. Now let's see what are the applications of gel electrophoresis. So uh, macromolecules which are uh, charged particles such as nucleic acids that are RNA, DNA or proteins can be separated in a mixture. It is used basically to diagnose the viral infection and the genetic disorders and cancer uh, for cancer research also. We can also use in forensics labs uh, to identify the criminals, the parentage, murder and the rape cases. 
to determine the evolutionary history of human and other populations also. So in uh, terms of comparative evolutionary genomics, we can also use gel electrophoresis for uh, study the evolutionary history of different organisms or different uh, populations in a world. Now comes another technique and that is spectrophotometry. Spectrophotometry, it is a method that is used to measure how much a chemical substance can absorb light by measuring the intensity of a light as a beam of light passes through a sample solution. This is a very simple definition. We will see in detail how a beam of light uh, can be used to observe the intensity of light that is absorbed by a particular substance. So the basic principle is that each compound absorbs or transmits light over a certain range of wavelength. Different components can absorb or they can transmit different waves, uh, wave, uh, uh, they can transmit light of different range of wavelength. So this is a basically a, a simple uh, spectrophotometer. It is a device that is used to perform a technique that is known as spectrophotometry. Now a sample is loaded in a machine and uh, the different amount of light can pass through the, this sample. And uh, it, uh, because it is a computational, uh, already computerized uh, uh, machines are available. So it, the machine will calculate that how much light was absorbed by a particular substance that was loaded in a machine. So the basic principle of spectrophotometer is that the white light is passed. Uh, this is a solution or a sample that was placed in a machine. A light is uh, actually bombarded on a solution and uh, we actually uh, uh, test the uh, efficiency of different wavelengths. So white light is first of all dispersed by the help of a uh, prisms and a particular wavelength of light is allowed to uh, transmit or uh, to uh, bombard on a solution that is the incident ray and after the incident ray after striking the solution the transmitted light is detected by a device that is known as detector now this detector is going to uh, actually recognize how much light is absorbed by a particular solution or we can say how much red light is absorbed by a particular solution so the difference between the in incident ray and the transmitted ray indicates the absorbance pattern of a uh, light by a particular substance now, uh, for example, uh, what is an uh, absorption spectrum? Absorption spectrum is a graph uh, actually that uh, shows the absorption of different wavelengths of light by a particular pigment. For example, uh, here uh, this graph shows uh, three different pigments that is chlorophyll A, chlorophyll B and keratinides. Now we can see uh, the wavelength that is the blue, uh, blue region was uh, uh, highly absorbed by chlorophyll A, but uh, chlorophyll absorbed more uh, in the light blues re blue regions. And keratinides uh, have the least absorption or no absorption at all. That is uh, the wavelength that is greater than 500 nanometer. So this uh, pattern can also help us to uh, study the different uh, the variations of the wavelength of light that are absorbed by a particular pigment. So this can be employed in the uh, uh, botanical studies. Now the amount of light absorbed uh, is actually plotted in a graph and this graph can be used further for research purposes. Now, what are the applications of uh, spectrophotometry? So it is widely used for quantitative analysis in various areas, for example, chemistry, physics, biology, biochemistry, material and chemical energy, engineering, clinical applications, industrial applications, etc. So this technique is actually widely used. And it can be used to determine the wavelengths of light that take, art, uh, that take part, actually, uh, there is a mistake, that take part in a photosynthesis. 
So we can actually enhance the process of photo, uh, photosynthesis by uh, providing different wavelengths of light to a particular plant. So we, it can uh, definitely it's going to affect the growth of a plant. And it can also be used to detect the small amounts of DNA in a sample. Now comes another technique and that is microscopy. So basically microscopy is a uh, use and handling of a microscope is actually known as microscopies and microscopy is a technical field of using microscope to view the objects and areas of objects that cannot be seen with the naked eye. That means that we cannot uh, see the objects with our normal eye. We use some instrument to visualize that microscopic organism or microscopic uh, materials. So uh, the range of microscopy is between uh, millimeters and nanometers. Most animal and plant cells are between 10 micrometer and 30 micrometer. Now in microscopy, the major uh, term that is used is the resolution. So resolution is the minimum capacity of a lens to differentiate between two adjacent points of a lens. So it actually, it is called the resolution power of a particular lens. When uh, uh, we can differentiate between the two adjacent points as a different point. So it can be increased uh, by increasing the magnification power of a lens and the resolution of human eye is 0.1 millimeter. Remember this point, the resolution of human eye is 0.1 millimeter. Now let's see what is magnification. We have uh, used this term in the previous slide. So magnification is actually, uh, it is a capacity of an optical instrument to increase the parent size of an object than its original size. Okay, uh, not the actual uh, size of an object is increased, but only the apparent size of an object is increased so that we can, uh, in simple words, we can say zooming in a picture. So uh, look at this uh, image. Now uh, this is one uh, X, one X means uh, this image has been magnified one time. 4x means this particular image is magnified four times. 10x means 10 times. Now uh, see the different resolution powers. Now uh, this was at the resolution 300 nanometer, this is at 80 nanometer and this is at 25 nanometer. So uh, just see, uh, here uh, the resolution uh, we cannot uh, actually uh, it is very simple. We can actually differentiate between these two points, a green one and a purple one. But when we increase the magnification, we can actually see the two points as a separate points, this green one and a purple one. So X means the number of times and the original size. Resolution and magnification power of a compound and electron microscope. We are going to see what is the difference between these two. Compound microscope consists of ocular lens and objective lens, and it is a very simplest form of a microscope. And overall magnification is equal to the product of magnification powers of, of both lenses, the ocular ones and the objective lens. We actually calculate the both, uh, we multiply the both uh, powers and as a result we get the uh, overall magnification of a particular microscope. Now resolving power of a light microscope is equal to 0.25 micrometer or we can say 250 nanometer and that is equal to uh, 2500 angstrom and its magnification, the magnification of light microscope uh, is up to 4000 times. While the resolving power of electron microscope is 0 0.5 to 5 angstrom and magnification uh, can be done up to uh, 300,000 times. So it, uh, it is a huge difference between these two. And now comes the micrometry. The before ones was uh, microscopy, now we are going to see micrometry. 
So micrometry is actually, it refers to the measurement of the dimension of the desired microorganism that is under a microscope, which uses two microscales that are known as micrometers. At first, the diameter of the microscopic field must be established with the help of these micrometers. Now, what are those micrometers? The first one is the ocular micrometer and the second one is known as stage micrometer. The ocular micrometer is placed in the eyepiece and stage micrometer is placed on a stage of a microscope. Okay, now we are going to see the types of micrometers that are used in micrometry as discussed in the previous slide. And we have the eyepiece graticule that is also known as ocular micrometer. And it is a basically a glass disc with 100 equal divisions with no absolute value. And it has numbered lines placed in an ocular of a microscope. And the second one is a stage micrometer that has a vertical lines uh, of a different distances like uh, some has a one millimeter and uh, it can be 0 0.1 millimeter or 0 0.01 millimeter. So this is an example of eyepiece micrometer or we can also say ocular micrometer and this second one is a stage micrometer and that is uh, one millimeter plus into 100 units that is 0 0.01 millimeter. So these lines are equally divided. So uh, basically the calibration of graticule and stage micrometer, we actually calibrate these two lines, that is line to line uh, calibration is done. And uh, by superimposing the images of eyepiece graticule and the stage micrometer scale, and it is possible to cal calibrate the graticule. Uh, now, size of a given object can be estimated. For example, uh, if we calculate this on this scale, 90 divisions are equal to four, uh, 240 micrometer. This is an eyepiece graticule and this is a stage micrometer. And when we calculate all these, so therefore one division on eyepiece graticule represents 240 divided by 90. And that is equal to 2.67 micrometer at a particular magnification that is 400 many, uh, magnification. I hope this situation is clear to all of you. Now uh, the time comes for the homework and uh, for homework you actually you are going to uh, do some activity also that was related to the chromatography. Other than that, uh, you have to describe the principles and applications uh, of the uh, operators that are used uh, in the techniques of chromatography, electrophoresis, spectrophotometry, and that's all. So uh, that's all for today and I hope you enjoyed the lesson and uh, if you have any question or any query, you can write in the comment section below and uh, uh, stay tuned for the next lecture inshallah very soon uh, i will be uploading next lectures and thank you for your time i hope you had enjoyed this lesson and uh, see you in next lesson inshallah till that time take care allah hafiz